Entrepreneurs can get stuck in their head, challenged by their thoughts, the voice in their head, and their beliefs. We chat with successful entrepreneurs who share their journey and the lessons learned along the way. The Ad Valued Entrepreneurs podcast is edutaining, leaving you with actionable advice to transform your life and create a thriving business that aligns with your values and goals. Our conversations are for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life they desire. You deserve it. It is possible. It's time for you to add value. This episode is brought to you by the newly released book, The Entrepreneur Mindset Shift, Growth Characteristics of Success by Robert C. Peterson. Available on Amazon, or you can order a personalized signed copy at addvalue2life.com slash shift. My guest today is Nick Shelton. Nick is a speaker, social strategist, and coach for introverted career professionals, as well as best-selling author of the book, An Introvert's Guide to World Domination. He has been fine-tuning the craft of effective, high-level social strategy and networking for over 20 years. Coupled with extensive research and 17 years of experience in the oil and gas industry, Nick has successfully built a strong international network of friends, colleagues, and associates. He believes the quality of your life comes down to the quality of your relationships. Now he teaches others how to easily navigate social events and situations with the goal of making real connections and building relationships that matter. Nick Shelton and I discussed some great networking tips. Nick has figured out how to make great connections with people who have what he wants and who are doing the things he wants to do. This episode is a masterclass in networking for introverts. Oh, and it'll work for extroverts too. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. I am just so excited to uh, get to learn from you and learn some new things and, and share with our audience. So, Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So typically, I just let everybody share their entrepreneurial journey a, a little bit. And so would you mind sharing um, how you got to where you are? Okay, well... It was a long, treacherous journey, but uh, for this most recent chapter, I, I, was, I started giving speeches, giving uh, talks about networking because uh, I was asked to. Uh, so it wasn't initially my idea, just someone said, hey, can you give a, uh, give a speech about networking? And so the first speech that I ever gave, it was in, in Spain, in Barcelona, Spain, mm. and the title was networking for introverts with limited capital and uh and i remember looking out in the audience and everyone was taking notes and i said oh they're taking notes they're they're actually interested in this and then so uh so more and more people asked me to speak about it and so i just started doing that and then people would ask me it's, oh it's, I, then i started doing workshops and things like that workshops and trainings and then people would say where can we get your book and i didn't have a book and I said, oh, I guess I have to have a book now because everyone's asking for it. So then I wrote a book and uh, then it just, yeah, just kind of uh, snowballed from there. <laughs> wow. So obviously introverts with no capital, that's uh, an interesting uh, niche to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's where it started. Now I'm glad to, and happy to talk to introverts with a lot of capital. That is, that's fine too. <laughs> Nice. So let's talk a little bit about connection and the challenge of making connection as as an introvert. Yes. Uh, well, so a lot of times people will uh, will shy away. They'll, they'll prefer to stay at home. And I get that because I would rather just stay at home most of the time myself. But then you're going to miss out on all kinds of opportunities, all kinds of relationships. The, the world's just going to pass you by. So you want to make sure that when you do choose to go out, you have the tools to, to, uh, to really get out there, make those connections quickly and in a way that you could and would do it. So then you can get on back home uh, to, to relax and get your energy back. You know, I know a lot of people have, uh, trouble with that. So I try to break it down. I, I, I describe it like this. Uh, so I was in the uh, Air Force for a while in the military. And uh, when I was in there, you know, they have you make the bed, everyone you know knows how to that, that military style bed. And like if you, someone just came off the street, and they said, Hey, make this bed military style, they wouldn't know how to do it. But 
what happens is they break it down into such easy steps that everyone, whether you are a genius or the opposite of a genius, everyone is able to make the bed. So I said, this can be applied to networking and social strategy. If we have the tools and the steps and we make it simple enough, something that you can do and would do, then everybody should be able to get that result in the end uh, by with their networking without too much uh, strain or pressure. <laughs> well, first, thank you for your service. I, uh, I also served in the Marines, and so I appreciate um, brothers in arms. And so thank absolutely, you, thank you for that. And and I like how you break, you know, try to break it down and, and help the step by step for the not the non genius. <laughs> and I definitely understand um, people living in both of those categories. But so so essentially, you're saying when you go out, be intentional. Yes. Right? If you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna go out the front door, let's let's make it count. Right. Yes, exactly. If, because, you know, a lot of times you don't want to go out. Some people loved going out, but uh, introverts, shy and socially awkward people are not usually among the people that love going out. But when they do, they want it to have an impact. So how did you develop your confidence to step on the stage, to to do some of these things that obviously are, seem like the opposite of what an introvert would want to do? Right. It was, it was absolutely terrifying at the beginning, but I decided I would be the guinea pig because I really wanted uh, access to opportunities and to meet uh, cool and influential people and things like that. And so I started by observing because I, I know that introverts are usually really good observers. So like I would go out and, you know, to restaurants table for one and just sit there and watch other people. And not in some creepy way where you have, you know, the newspaper and you're just like looking over <laughs> to the menu. But you know, I just go out and I would just watch people and see how they interacted. And I would say, OK, what can I learn from this? What little thing can I do that I saw tonight that that I could do that I would do? Because, you know, in a lot of the material out there, they'll just say, just go up and start talking to people and introduce yourself. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. You know, it has to be like, what could I do, though? So then I. I would just start observing and use myself as the guinea pig. And then every day I'd take little steps to find out, well, what can I do to make this a little easier? And uh, I was able to develop a little system and it started working. And, you know, sometimes things wouldn't work and I would do less of that and more of what would work. And then I started putting it together and it got a lot of momentum and I started you know, meeting people and uh, just learning how to do it from the experience. And th yeah, there's all kinds of cool things. And I'll share some tips and stuff when you're ready for that. But like with body language and just uh, going in and and working the room, there's just a, if you have a strategy to do it, then it's way easier than just trying to wing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's 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 talk a little bit about strategy of, of working a room. For an introvert, for somebody who, who doesn't want to talk to anybody in that room. <laughs> right. Well, usually I would say one of the best things you can do before the event that you're going to, if you can, a lot of events will have some kind of social media attached to it. So if you can, try to get onto that, that social media page and they'll have a little chat group or something and there'll be one or two people that are really hardcore carrying most of the chat in there. And if you can just kind of piggyback on them and, you know, thank them for a comment or ask a question or something like that, and then say, I will be attending that event. I look forward to meeting you there. So then that way you're, they've seen your name. They know that you're supposed to be there and you'll be looking for them. So now instead of walking into a cold room, you're walking into a room where someone has seen your name and, uh, they are expecting to see you. You can also go on to LinkedIn and look up a few of those people and kind of get a little bit of background. So when you walk in, you say, oh, we both like kayaking. I saw your, your LinkedIn page. And then you have some conversation starters. And another thing is I say when you walk into a place, you know, you want to make sure your physiology is right, your body language. So I always say use the cape walk. So you want to walk as though you're wearing a cape, an invisible cape. I guess you could actually wear a cape if you want. 
but uh, an invisible cape, and you want that cape to have a nice drape to it and flow properly. So that's going to make you have a good posture and walk with confidence. And if you have that good physiology, yeah, it changes everything about yourself. So when you walk in, you will actually feel a little different. You'll still be a little nervous, but you'll feel different. And then when you get in that room, try to go to the food or beverages. Go straight over there and get yourself. That'll give you something to do with your hands. And you can talk about the food, engage people by the food. And that's a really good, uh, good place to start. And you can hold a, a pen in one hand or a notebook or some of that material and then your food. So now you're good. You're not fidgeting or doing anything weird with your hands. So that's a, that's a good, good starting spot. And, and the only thing I might add to that is breathe, right? So <laughs> change, changing your body language, getting the beverage, but you still got to remember to breathe. Take, yes. take, take, a, take a good breath and remind yourself. I like the cape walk, cape walk, stand up tall. Um, yes. So we, when, when we want to help people change their, change their mindset, change like even before they go to film a, a Facebook live or, or, or do something, um, I share the three B's, right? So, your body language, your breathing, and then, of course, your belief, right? Believe yes. that it's going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> and, and just remind yourself. In fact, it's going to be great. Why, right. why wouldn't it be great, right? Exactly. So so that's fantastic. Love the cape walk. That's, that's a powerful step in, in, into that space. Yeah. So obviously, you've built your business, I would say, almost – most people don't know a purpose, don't know a passion, and you, and you 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 have to explore a little bit with well, what are people asking you for help for? What are you you know what are you good at? And and that kind of happened for you naturally. They right. started asking you to speak, and more opportunities to speak uh, have come about. And now you've written a book, and now you you've done some workshops, and those things combined. But one of the challenges typically is is building an audience and generating leads. Yes. What what has helped you in, in building an audience now that you are uh, been established as an expert? So uh, doing podcasts has helped out a lot. I, I get asked to do a lot of podcasts, so I, I do as many as I can, and that helps get the word out. And then also the workshops, and I, I, those are the two main things, workshops, podcasts, and yes, any speaking opportunities, I speak and then people just show up. It's, 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 I'm just following the, the path. Like you said, it's, this was laid out for me. I didn't go seeking it out. People just said, Hey, can you do this? Sure. And then I, uh, it, cause it's something that I struggled with myself and had to work through. And then when people see, okay, well, I'm struggling with that. He seems to have at least part of it figured out. I will, I will ask for more information. So yeah, just, Getting on podcasts and speaking about it is is my number one thing to uh, build brand awareness. Nice. <clears throat> so, obviously, you've had opportunities to to travel. You've had opportunities to to speak in other places. In fact, your first speaking was was in Barcelona, which is yes. pretty incredible. Um, how how has that fortified your your passion or, or increased your, your desire, the opportunity to, to, to do it internationally. Oh, it's, it's great. Well, cause I love to travel. So that helps. And then I, whenever anyone has a, a success story or something like that, and, and says that something that I said, or they read in my book, helped them out. And they, they actually have a real life example of, Hey, I tried this and it worked then it's great and that that helps uh, pour gas on the on the fire. And I, I really get uh, pumped up. I'm like, yeah, people are actually liking this, you know, because, you know, sometimes you have that. Does is anyone getting value out of this? But when you get that confirmed and people say, yes, yes, we are. And we want more then and please come to this other country and talk to about it. Talk to us about it. It's uh, it really uh, it's it's a really cool, cool feeling. And, and that that makes me very passionate to continue nice we we'll also understand that that you're a comedian and and how has that work helped or influenced your your business life oh uh, yes yeah. so 
It started out when I was doing the public speaking, I would always try to crack a few jokes at the beginning just to loosen everybody up. And then I was thinking, well, I could, I could just do just that, <laughs> you know? So, um, and then especially uh, when I was trying to find uh, speaking opportunities, I said, well, there's the regular speaking opportunities, but then there's all these other opportunities where I could just do comedy. So I can, uh, whatever pops up, it'll give me more opportunities to get on the stage and, and share the message, build more awareness. So maybe people find out about me through comedy and then they say, oh, he has a book and then I can help them out that way. Or they find out about me through the, you know, the speeches, workshops, all that and the book. And then they say, oh, he also does comedy. And then that helps out the comedy thing. And I just, I really enjoy uh, laughing and being entertained and then also entertaining others when I can. And sure, it's, it's not a super comfortable thing. Of course, I, I get nervous as well when I'm doing that. But one trick that I try to tell people is, in my mind, I always just think it's, it's a dream. It's not really happening. So when you get on stage, you go, oh, that, this is just a simulation. I'm not actually doing this, you know? And so you, uh, it, you just think, I'll just wake up in my bed shortly and none of this really happens. So you can do anything in your dreams. And I'm not saying I just strip down naked and start uh, you know, running around, but I try to be, be a, a gentleman and classy in my dreams. Yeah, that's definitely a different show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So obviously now you've, you've created this brand, Reputation, and how, how important has been uh, your personal development, your, your character growth in, in the process? Well, I would say, yeah, I've learned a lot about myself and how I work, and then the observation on other people, with other people, uh, having people share uh, different experiences that helps me grow and then I can share experiences from other people to them and that helps everybody build and I think it's it's been a really good personal growth process along the way and one thing that I also uh, noticed that everybody can benefit from is the more you get out there and network and work on these skills, the easier it is because uh, one of the uh, things that I talk about is trying to become known. Uh, you don't have to be like a world superstar, but if you're known enough in a certain field, then it's way easier when you walk into a place, if you don't have to introduce yourself and people already know who you are, then you can just sit over there quietly in the corner and then people will come over and say, oh, you know, Robert, you know, then they'll just come up to you. And then that makes it way easier to network and meet people if you can try to establish some kind of reputation. And so, yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of positives. Nice. Well, and, and you talk about networking to a higher level, to, to the next level, to uh, that level where, where you become known. How, how do you continue making those connections to, to a next level and a next level? Oh, well, it comes down to that, that saying you, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time around. And so for me, when I started, I was thinking, okay, who am I spending time around? And, you know, some of those people are, you know, are they doing things that I would like to do? Is that where I see myself going? And it was not, and I still love my friends, but I said, I need to get a different social circle around me so I can get some mentors in there and, and pick up some, some different habits. And so I'm always uh, trying to see what, what would I like my life to be like and trying to surround myself with people that have the skills, that have the lifestyle that I would like to have. And it, it's really beneficial in that, you know, some of those skills do rub off on you and you can ask a lot of questions on how to get to that next level. But then there's also people that have cool stuff. Like, so for example, I love, you know, sailboats and, but I don't want to own a sailboat. So if I have friends that have sailboats, they're not going to go out by themselves. They want to go out sailing with friends. So if I have friends that have sailboats, they'll say, do you want to go? Of course I want to go. And then, so I get to go on a sailboat and, uh, and so there's perks 
to to uh, broadening that social circle and uh, leveling it up in whatever areas that are important to you. Well, I love that you, you talk about what would I like my life to be like, and then who are the people that are doing that? Who are the people that have that? Yes. And, and not only does that create a vision for yourself that creates a, a destination you know, for who you want to be, but then it also gives you the list of, of people that you want to be hanging around. Right. Um, and so, so now that you know what you want to be like and who you want to be like, how do you connect with those people? Ah, that's very good. So I, I think, where, where are these people? Where do they hang out? And so I need to be in those places. So for example, for me, and this could be different for everyone, depending on what you're trying to do, but I go to fundraisers all the time. So usually one a month, sometimes two fundraisers a month, because I know there's always going to be interesting people at fundraisers. I also enjoy the symphony. I went last month. I, I beat all kinds of cool people at the symphony and uh, I, I, I enjoy it and the people there enjoy it. So we're already, we already have something in common that we can talk about and uh, you know, car shows and uh, things like that. They have some really cool at the, uh, we have some small regional airports around and sometimes they'll have, uh, you know, some, uh, a, a, like a jet display where they'll say, Hey, we're, we're, having a jet expo, private jet expo. Now I'm not in the market for private jets, but I, I like private jets, sure. And I'd like to be around people that are in the market for private jets. So I should be at the private jet expo. So I'll go there and eat the finger sandwiches and drink the champagne and, and talk to people. And, you know, and then, and I, once again, I, and I say in the book that I, I don't pretend like I'm, oh yes, my last jet was this way. No, I, I just say, I just hope one day that I, I'm trying to make it so one day I might be able to be in one of these. But until then, I can at least stand around and look at them and, you know, have the good snacks that they have here. And then so, uh, but you, by being, you know, humble and being around the, the environment, you know, it, there's a lot of people that love. Oh, and another thing is people think that if they go to something like that, people are going to be judging them like, what are you doing here? You don't belong here, but people love sharing their expertise and they love taking someone under their wing and mentoring them. So they love it if you have questions, you know, as long as you don't come in pompous and arrogant, if you're humble and you show up, then people love to show off their stuff. So if somebody does, like I met a really cool person that I went to the, uh, a private jet party and then there's all these uh, people standing around, but there's this one young guy that uh, his suit didn't fit right. And, you know, he looked kind of awkward and no one was talking to him. And I said, well, what's the story with this guy? So I went and I started talking to him and this guy uh, was great. And, and uh, he was pro probably one of the most important people there, but no one knew it. Wow. And I said, you know, and I told him one day, you know, these jets are really cool. I, I hope one day that I can uh, have something or, riding something like this. And he said, oh, you think these are cool? Come see me Wednesday. I'll show you some cool jets. And yeah. then, you know, then the next week, you know, I'm with this guy and he had uh, his family apparently uh, is uh, they're a, a family to know. And so, yeah, I got to go and check out their jets. And that was really cool. And it just all happened because I happened to be I showed up. So another key, show up. I, I, instead of being at the house, I said, okay, well, what the type of people that travel around on jets, who are these people? I need to meet those people just in case, you know, I might be able to learn something. And I got a lot of cool experiences and met a lot of new people and some are friends of mine now. And so, yeah, you have to just put yourself in the environments uh, mm -hmm. that you think the people will be that you want to meet. Well, I love that you mentioned that you can still be authentic, right? You can still be you. Like, man, I love this jet. I love this food. And, and you guys are all pretty neat people. And I hope to get to ride one someday. <laughs> right. Oh, your family owns one. And now we're friends. <laughs> hey, I'm going for, you know, I'm flying to Nebraska and back. Like, hey, let's go. Right, yeah. yeah. What a great opportunity. You mentioned a couple of really cool places. Like, you want... I mean, I guess somebody could just look at their vision board. What are the things on your vision board and where are those people hanging out and uh, and get involved in activities where, where those people are? 
Um, and that's that, that's pretty creative, right? And, and taking, you know, being intentional about the activities you choose to uh, make yourself present. Yes. That's, uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> so let, let's, I guess that plays into, let's, let's talk about play and fun. How, how important is, is play and fun? It is very important because, you know, you don't want to be serious all the time. You have to have a good time. So, yeah, I try to think of activities that could be uh, fun to do. So there's there are activities that you can join or you can make your own activities. So, for example, uh, I when I moved into a new apartment, I said, I want to meet the type of people. So I live downtown in the. Uh, in the city. And I said, I want to meet the type of people that live in this building. And so I said, I will have a wine and cheese party in my home and I'll invite everybody over. And, you know, absolutely terrifying, by the way, because you say, what if everybody shows up? And, <laughs> you know, I don't have enough space for everybody to show up. And, you know, what, uh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to host a wine and cheese party. But I said, well, I'll just do it and see what happens. And I'll just be terrified and i'll just let it happen and you know i'd say maybe 16 people showed up so it wasn't uh overwhelming and i told everyone to not bring wine but everyone brought wine anyway and you know i had the cheese platter out and it was great because then i got to when as soon as i moved into the building i got to meet a bunch of people right away and bond with them over the wine and cheese thing and then so right out the gate, I could see people in the hallway and say, oh, hey, Jim, hey, Susan, you know, and then in the elevator, in the mail room. And so I already had established a small little community just right out the gate in this uh, complex. And it was and it was fun. I also did the same thing at a workplace. I was uh, I had never had caviar before. And I said, I'm going to go get some caviar and I'm going to bring it in. And then I'm going to invite everybody into the break room to have caviar. And uh, and so I got like three three different three or four different types of caviar and some of the crackers and all that and then i sent an email out hey if anyone wants to have some caviar come on down because it should i just sit at home by myself eating caviar and go oh no i don't like that no we we all came together and uh we all decided we're not huge fans of caviar <laughs> but <laughs> but we bonded over that and then it, it was it was a good discussion topic and i've also done it with like chowder is like everybody bring your favorite clam chowder we're gonna have chowder thursday and then we all try clam chowder and so it's just different things you can think of but then you can control how it goes because you it was your idea and so you can do that or you can join somebody else's but it's it's you know it's all in it's all in fun having fun with it we will be right back after this short break this episode is sponsored by the newly released book the Entrepreneur Mindset Shift, Growth Characteristics of Success by Robert C. Peterson. Available on Amazon, or you can order a personalized signed copy at addvalue, the number two, life.com. Addvalue to life.com forward slash shift. If you enjoy the show, please like and subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. Well, I like that you're tying your your play and fun to networking to to possibilities to meet different people and so you're actually accomplishing a couple things all at the same time um i really love that you're doing it scared like yes. i'm terrified i'm doing it anyway I'm, <laughs> yes. leaning, I'm leaning into the fear right and i tell people i'm terrified so i don't just say no i'm cool everything's fine no i say oh i'm absolutely terrified absolutely terrified but you know then i but i do it because you know, that's the only way that you're going to get the experience. I just let it unfold. And in the end, I go, oh, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> well, I just love that you can say, I'm terrified with a big grin on your face. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> yes, that's my, you know, everyone has their default uh, way that they are when they're terrified. And usually I'll just be like, oh, yeah, this is this is horrible. You know, <laughs> but, you know, but I you know, I'll be smiling. Yeah. When I was skydiving, I was like, Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go out the plane. But you know, I, yeah, I was absolutely hearts beating, you know, sweat pouring. Yeah. But you know, you go through it anyway. Uh, I actually think it was easier to jump out of a plane than it was the bungee jump. Cause 
rolling out of the plane, I the ground was so far away, like, oh, that's no big deal. But bungee jumping, that the ground is like, no, it's right there. <laughs> it's like yeah. five feet away. We're, we're, I'm, I'm not jumping off of this thing. <laughs> right. So I definitely understand, you know, a little bit of scared and do it anyway. Yes. <laughs> then they count down and you, you don't have a choice. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. When they get to zero, you're supposed to jump. And so what else are you going to do? <laughs> right. Oh, that's so good. So let, let's talk a little bit about about mentors. How how have mentors helped you in in, the, in your journey? The mentors have been really great, and that's another thing about that. Trying to get that your five people you spend time around dialed in, because then you can ask questions. And a lot of times, people really want to help you. So, and if they see you making a mistake, they can say, "Oh no, don't do that. You want to do this." And so it's. Uh, it's opened a lot of doors and created a lot of awareness because sometimes you don't know what you're supposed to be learning or focusing on in any, any particular field. And if you can get a mentor, they'll help you out and they enjoy helping you out. And, you know, and I do the same for others. I am a mentor to a few people and, you know, I help them along and navigate the steps and I can see some obvious errors and say, oh, no, don't do that do this. And this is why. And so yeah, mentors play a huge role. And that's a, another thing. If you just stay at home and never go out, then you're not going to get those mentors. And if you think that you can do it all online, I know some people say, well, now we're in a virtual uh, sort of a world. I should just be able to do all this online. It's not the same. It's not the same as meeting people. And that when I tried to do that, I remember uh, one of my mentors had said, all right, I don't do this computer stuff. We have to meet. Let's go meet me down uh, downtown for a coffee. And, you know, and so then I was like, no, I don't want to go. And then I went and then and now, yeah, that's what we do. And not, that's what I make other people do, too. Like, no, we have to get off the computer. We have to go and meet in person and have a discussion face to face. And it's, it makes all the difference in the world. So let's yeah, let's push that a little bit, because over the last two years, we've kind of been we've kind of been pushed into this this COVID Zoom call world. And, yes. and obviously introverts are happy, right? They're at home, they're <laughs> networking, they're doing everything, but they're still, woohoo, I'm safe. Yes. How, how do we push them? How do we, how do we push out of that? How do we find the value of, of getting back face to face? Well, I think that, you know, it's going to, it's a hard sell. It's a hard sell, but uh, you have to, explain that yeah there is a lot of value it's not the same and there's a lot of people and i've attended workshops virtual workshops where they say it is the same it's just the same I'm like it's not the same just like with uh stand-up comedy i can just sit here and do some stand-up comedy like this but then the the it's not the same i'm not getting that energy from the audience i need that energy and when you're face to face it's a totally different dynamic just like uh if i was going on a date and i was on a date like this on a on a video call and it's, so i'm gonna take a sip of my wine now how are you you know it's it's not the same as being physically present and so i think that it's it's super important and you know naturally if you are uh, networking overseas or something and i'm talking to someone in you know new zealand or something like that we have to do it this way until we can meet up but when you get the opportunity, it is really great to uh, make that make that connection in person because it then it it kind of solidifies it. And then after you have a strong in person connection, then you can do more virtual stuff because you've already had the in person thing. But it, it, you, it's really important to have the the in person uh, connection. I know it's it's hard to convince people of that that don't want to do it, but it it makes all the difference in the world. So, so now, obviously, you've you've pushed out you know, and done tons of stuff scared and and met tons of people scared and yes and how how would that scared person decide I I need a mentor and and how can I connect with this, with this mentor at, at this place that that that's where I want to go. So yeah, it's interesting on the so when they do venture out, you know, it's interesting on the uh, saying I. You know, you want a mentor, sure, but then you, how do you select the mentor? And sometimes this, the mentor selects you, but, you know, you have to be you know, agreeable and kind of a good fit for the mentor. But 
One thing that you can do is after you've met someone in person, and so this is a really great tip for people that, that uh, so if you, but you initially have to go out physically and meet the person. So when you have met them, then this is what I've done and coached people to do for the mentor thing that has worked really well for me. Then I have, I was at a conference. I met this great guy that I said, this, this would be a good mentor for me. And then I went home and I crafted an email and I said, I think that you would be a great mentor, uh, but I'm not going to bother you with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you an email every week on what my kind of like an accountability thing. These are my plans for the next week. This is what I accomplished last week. And then here's some random things that I'm up to. And I'm going to send it to you every week. And you don't have to read it. But I'm holding myself accountable to you. But it's there's no responsibility on your part. I'm just doing this on my side because you are someone I admire and respect. And I feel that, you know, I'd be disappointing you if I didn't do it. But you can just delete them. I'm, but I'm on my side. I'm going to send it. And then usually they... And so this has happened. So I've, I've sent like maybe so on the seventh or eighth email that I sent seventh or eighth week, then they respond back and they say, I'm reading every word of these. I'm loving it. Keep them coming. And so I don't put any pressure and say, you have to mentor me. I just say, I've just, I've just adopted you as a mentor, but I'm going to just start sending you stuff. You don't have to, you have no responsibility to do anything with it, but on my end, I'm going to do this. And so, and then there's even one that I didn't hear from, but then I, and then I stopped sending emails and then I got an email that are like, Hey, what happened with the emails? Why'd you stop? <laughs> and then, so uh, that uh, when they see that you're actually dedicated and putting the time in, then a lot of times they'll step up. So even if they're busy, they'll make time for someone that they see is really stepping up and, you know, keeping track of, of, you know, what they're planning to do that week and then holding themselves accountable and actually putting the effort in. Then a lot of times that person will step up and will actually start actively mentoring. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously the, just in your own mindset, right? I, I, this, I admire this person a great deal and now I'm committed to telling them what I'm doing and not doing and, and whether I'm following through that accountability in your own mind is, is pretty powerful. Um, and so I, I like, I, I'm just going to send this to you. You don't have to read it or do anything, but, but, it's going to do a lot for me. So right. just, just let me slide into your inbox every week and right. ignore me. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. But you have to meet the person first. You can't just be <laughs> some stranger and do it. You have to at least have met them and say, oh, hey, yeah, it's me. And then you can go off and stay at home and send it. Well, but, it always yeah. helps to at least be able to say thank you for, you know, sharing that or this when you, you know, we had this conversation at that little dinner or whatever. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's pretty powerful. All right. So what's, what's been your biggest challenge in, in developing yourself and having, having your own business, right? Well, I would say, Hmm, the biggest challenge, it's all pretty challenging. There's gotta be something that was more challenging than other stuff. Well, I'd say that there's a lot of, uh, so for online stuff, I, I'm not as tech savvy as you would think because, you know, I have glasses. So you think, oh, well, you must be really tech savvy, <laughs> but uh, I am not very tech savvy. So there's a lot of things where I'm always trying to figure it out. So in person, I figured out a lot of in-person stuff, but then when it's online stuff, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, and then, you know, so people, all the social media and stuff like that. Well, you got to post and then do this and that. Like, I don't, I don't know how I need to have a teenager living with me or something. So I can be like, Hey, come here and show me how to work this. So that is a, so the tech part is a big uh, challenge for me just because I, uh, it's, it's not something that I'm passionate or interested in. So it's not like I'm going to stay up late studying tech stuff and how to what the latest app is uh, but apparently it's important and you need to know so i'm it has been a struggle and uh you know one day i guess either i will fall completely behind or i will just hire a teenager to come in here and do all of the stuff so now you've now you've broken two stereotypes a that you're 
you wear glasses so you're smart and, and have tech figured out and be that you're an introvert and automatically a computer geek <laughs> right exactly oh that's yeah well if you're not a computer geek and you're staying at home what what are you doing <laughs> it's true there's there's uh you can watch uh netflix you can you know i i, I do a lot of cooking i used to want to be a chef at one point but the reason why i didn't was because I felt that if I had to cook, then I wouldn't enjoy it. I like cooking as a hobby. It's relaxing. But if someone was saying, hey, make three of these and make one of these and make this, the people need it. Come on. Then I don't think I would like that. So I cook as a hobby and I, uh, I consider myself an artist. So I, I'll write some poetry I, and I write that uh, comedy material as well. So it's, uh, it's all good stuff. Nice. What, what else do you love to do in your free time? I love sailboats. I love kayaking and uh, some karaoke, but not uh, I, my singing voice is not good. Uh, it's the karaoke that I, I like to perform. So I'll sing badly, but I perform really well. So it's, <laughs> it's at least entertaining to watch. Oh, and, nice. <laughs> and yeah, just uh, and, uh, horseback riding. Right, I don't do a whole lot here. I grew up riding a lot of horses, but when I travel, so it's been I've been to 39 countries so far, and I think I've ridden horses in 30 of the 39 countries. Nice. So that's always fun too. That's pretty cool. So what other what other thing do you do when you travel? What what obviously riding horses is now your commitment to try to get a horse in every country, but <laughs> what what else do you love to do when you're traveling? Well, the food, the food is I always love to try the food. And it's, it's amazing. That's one of my favorite things to do, go around, and try new restaurants. And another thing that I tell people when they travel to, uh, to try to get established and network uh, really quickly when you're traveling is when you show up, I, I try to stay at a, they call it a homestay, stay with a local family if you can for you know a few days. And that gives you kind of the lay of the land, it's a little uh, glimpse on the customs and culture. And then they'll and they kind of show you around and introduce you to some people. So the homestay, if you can, then I take a cooking class and a dance class and a language class. And so you're meeting a lot of people all at once. You're, you're getting the food exposure and meeting the people that are taking the, the food class and the people that are teaching it. Then the dance class, you're up close and personal, dancing, learning the dance, meeting those people. Language, you're, even if you already know it, you're still taking it. You're meeting the people that are learning. You're meeting the people that are taking that are. Uh, teaching and then from all these people you'll get invited to so many things and you'll there's always people to answer your questions and you will get a nice social circle built within the first two weeks you will you will be good to go and so i like doing that and then saying let's get some food where can we get some food around here that's that's incredible that that plan having i i've traveled extensively not not quite as much as you um, I've also lived lived overseas for you know a good portion of our lives, and those are that's a that social circle idea: homestay, cooking class, dance class, language class, and then and then food. Like you're you're nailing it. Like that's that's incredible. Yes, um, and that would work. That would work for networking here. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it would. I've <laughs> never tried it here. Yeah. <laughs> if you uh, want to build a social <laughs> network, if you did those. You know, go stay in someone's home, go take a cooking class, a, a dance class, a language class, and then find the places to go to eat. That'd be pretty powerful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You would uh, definitely have some friends very quickly. Absolutely. Man. All right. So what's been the impact of being an author? Oh, the, it's, it's been pretty cool because, you know, it's a, you get to actually say, hey, I have a book. And then people say, you have a book. And then. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that have books, but then, you know, some people know a lot of people that have books, but most of the people that I know don't know a lot of people that have books. So they actually think it's kind of a big deal. And so that's, it feels good. It's nice. And it's the, another good thing about it is, you know, your message can just be out there and people can, people that you haven't met can learn about what you're trying to teach and they can, they might reach out at some point and say that it helped them. And that's really cool. And I'm, 
I'm working on the audiobook version because people have been bugging me because you know I've been following the thing of people asking me for stuff and they're like, when's the audiobook coming out? And I had no plan to do the audiobook, but now since so many people are bugging me about it, I said, I guess I have to because everybody's asking for it. Nice. So, I, I'm actually doing the same. I just recorded chapter two. So oh, nice. I'm just recording them and making an MP3 folder and people can just download it and put it on their music app. And so, you know, it's uh it's a simplified audible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but reading my own book's been been pretty cool. Like it's kind of a fun process. Yeah, it is. It it's it is nice. It made me want to write another book just because I said, well, that wasn't as hard as I thought. Because before you write a book, and I'm sure that you know this, before you write it, you're thinking, oh man, it seems kind of like a tough thing. But then when you do it, you say that wasn't really that bad. I could probably do another one. There are there are far scarier things than writing a book. Yeah. <laughs> and far harder things. Absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> so obviously military background, um, you know, character is, is important, obviously, in, in, in service. Character is important in business. But I think as an entrepreneur, character is, is, is even more important. And you've talked about, you know, being authentic in, in these um, environments and, and places. But I think character takes authenticity to another level, right? Yeah. And so let, let's chat a little bit about character, character development, and how important it is to, to be you, right? Right. It is super important because that's your, that's your brand. That's your reputation. It all comes down to that character and being authentic. And people will remember that. And that is, yeah, that's how you are presenting yourself to the world. And so you want to come across as, and be known as a, uh, is truly you and there's some some people that are are not the most pleasant people to be around but if they are authentically them i go well wow, i love it that they're like this because you know they're not there's no uh there's no fakeness in there you go that's just how they are because i i've met one guy that it's like there's no filter whatsoever he just says says what he means means what he says and he's always controversial everywhere he goes and I'm like, man, I, I'm almost jealous of that because it's just so just straight from the hip all the time. But I, and I love it just because I always know I don't have to guess. I wonder what he thinks about this. None of that. I know exactly what he thinks about that. So it's uh, but yeah, it's it's really important to, you know, just be your true self. And then that way, people that are around you, they're getting that version and not some uh fake drummed up version of you that you have to constantly try to live up to and things just work out way better if you are authentic it just everything's so much smoother and a lot less stress if you're just yourself and naturally there's going to be some people that might not like the real you and that's fine and uh, but there'll be plenty of people that do and yeah so it's it's definitely important for you know yourself and just for the world in general, just to, just to have that good character. Hmm. So do you have any routines that you use that you stick to that, that help you? With uh, character or with? Uh, just, just in general, just a, a daily routine or weekly routine or, I mean, obviously you have a routine for when you travel and, yes. and, and arrive in some place. So, so what, what routines help you keep your day organized, keep yourself, um, in the space you want to stay in? Well, for me, yeah, I do the, uh, I, when I wake up in the morning, I, I usually have, I have different playlists. So I try to wake up, uh, I wake up really early and then, cause I like to be awake for at least an hour before I encounter another human being. So <laughs> I wake up early and then I usually like to start the day by singing. So once again, my singing isn't great, but I like to kind of sing as I'm getting ready in the morning. And that kind of helps. That's what the me. headphones are for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets me in the right frame of mind because I'm singing and I'm kind of dancing around. And then, uh, then I can start my day. But um, let's see, what other parts of the routine would there be? Yeah, I try to get some exercise in every day. Uh, just to get the, the circulation, the blood flowing. And I, I feel better. I don't really enjoy exercise itself, but I know that when it's done, I, I definitely feel much better just getting that the blood flowing a little bit. And uh, 
And yeah, it's, uh, I don't have a lot of complicated things. Like, so I don't do the, I used to do the cold showers and stuff like that. And then and I was talking to someone about this yesterday and I did cold showers for a couple of months. And then one day I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do a warm shower. But then last night uh, I did a, I did a cold shower last night because I said, you know, let me revisit this. But yeah, I don't have that as part of my daily routine. I just, it's just that singing. I like to, uh, to start the day off singing and uh, it helps. There's a like some kind of meme or something I saw a few weeks ago and it said uh, for 2022 or somebody, it's one of the uh, cartoon figures said, what's 2022 going to be like? And the other one said, it's going to be full of roses. And the other person said, why do you think that? And they said, because I'm planting roses. <laughs> and I said, oh, I like that. And so like for me, if I start the day off singing and in a good kind of vibe, I'm kind of setting the stage for the rest of my day, you know, coming out in the right way. So then maybe the rest of the day might follow suit. And so I can at least get it started off correctly. I don't know what's going to happen, but I can at least start off singing. Well, I love that. Just starting in a joy and happy place. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's pretty powerful. Um, so. Let's talk about contribution. How has contribution been a part of your journey? Like giving back? Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, I think it's very important because once again, you know, I was struggling myself and there was a lot of people that did a lot of cool things for me and they didn't have to, but they used to say, someone did it for me, so I'm helping you out. And so I try to help others. Like with the mentoring, I try to uh, help people if there's some obvious way that I can help them, then I do it. And sometimes they go, "Ah, right, you need another mentor for that. I don't, I don't know how to do that. But yeah, I think it's very important to give back because you also learn a lot when you are, as they say, there's a saying about it, but when you're teaching somebody something, it's like you're learning again and it helps you kind of dial in uh, stuff that you already know. And so it, I think it's really important to give back. And also with those, uh, with those fundraisers that I like going to. So not only am I meeting the people that are at the fundraisers, but I can help give back through the fundraisers as well. Uh, but I, I prefer instead of, you know, so money is good, but then I also prefer the actually helping people like a mentor style giving back because it's, it's, it's really cool to, to see somebody grow and make progress and know that you had an influence in there. Mm, absolutely. <clears throat> So what inspires you, Nick? What inspires me? Huh. That is really good. I I would say, well, I going back to the food thing, I'm inspired by food. So like I think, man, there's good. So a lot of these things are like, what kind of food are they going to have there? I bet it's going to be good stuff. But uh, I, I know that it's supposed to be a better answer because nobody's inspired by food. I That's am. That's not true. But, That's uh, terrific. <laughs> we don't judge answers. We just share them. Yes, I, I love food. And then, yeah, I just like, uh, so for me, ultimately, I, I just love being able to travel and uh, just see new things, meet new people. And, uh, you know, when I do leave my house or hotel to meet new people and you know hear their stories and share my story and it's it's so that's kind of inspirational to me to uh to find a way i always try to think to get back on the boat because i love sailboats are so peaceful so i always say i'm gonna do these things then i'm gonna get back on the boat i always have to get back on the boat and uh and so that's kind of like a grounding thing for me to get recentered again and you know, living in Colorado, not a whole lot of uh, opportunities to, you know, go sailing, but not on uh, very big boats anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, so just the knowing that another trip is coming up, another adventure, that's very inspirational. And on those trips and adventures, there's going to be some cool food there. And so that's that's really my my inspiration. And if I can make a difference, you know, if I can make a difference to someone, then that is a it's a it's a big deal to me. It's a really big deal if I have a positive impact on somebody. I I, I really really enjoy that. Nice. All right, this is going to be a challenging one. I know it's going to be tough. So, where or what was your favorite meal? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I'd say 
my favorite meal that just comes to the top of my head, it would be the uh, the house special at the Mon Ami Gabi, uh, which is the restaurant at the bottom of the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, that is my favorite restaurant in the pla- on the planet. Uh, and so the house special, it's a uh, it's a filet mignon in a, uh, a red wine reduced red wine sauce, and uh, I think I had asparagus and some kind of uh, potatoes with that. And uh, that was, so off the top of my head, I would say that was, that's my favorite meal. And I go there, sometimes I fly out to Las Vegas just to eat there, and then I fly back. I don't see the shows, I don't gamble, I just go have dinner with one of my friends, and then we fly back, because I love that place. I've got friends going to Vegas for a conference, and I'm not going to go to the conference, but I might, I'll just, now I can have a plan. We're going out to eat at Mon Ami, and and, uh, I it's been referred. So I'm flying yes. out for having dinner and I'm flying home. I love it. Yes. Be great. Yes. All right. What's, uh, what's your big dream, Nick? My big dream is to, uh, well, I would like to have the option to go sailing every day if I want to, mm. just because I really enjoy sailing and, uh, and or kayaking, uh, not uh, not river kayaking because I would die immediately, uh, <laughs> but like uh, ocean or bay kayaking. You know, it's it's a little it's more manageable. I've done that many times, and so far everything's been good. But the rivers, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's too challenging. I want I'm there not to be challenged. I'm there for the beauty of it. So. I I understand. I got one of our friends. One of my networking friends is a stand up paddleboarder on Colorado rivers. I'm oh, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> paddleboards were meant for water that doesn't move. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Why exactly. would you paddle white water paddleboard? I have no yeah. idea. That so, doesn't sound fun at all. A little more adventurous than I want to be. <laughs> yes. So now you you just shat, had had that coffee with that entrepreneur for the last hour and you want to leave him with Nick Shelton's words of wisdom. What would you share? I would say show up. Nothing happens unless you show up. So that the most important thing before anything else can happen is you need to show up, show up in person. And if there is no in person, if the event is only an online event, then show up online. But if you can show up in person, show up in person, but you have to show up. That is the number one most important thing. Even if you show up, you don't say anything. You just sit in the corner. At least you were there. So show up is the number one tip. Ah, So good. Nick, thank you so much for joining me today, sharing some great wisdom, wonderful stories. And, and great adventures. I just appreciate your time. Yes, anytime. Thank you for having me. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, or leave a review. We have a free gift for you at addvaluemindset.com. That's A-D-D value mindset.com. We've collected some of the best mindset secrets shared by successful entrepreneurs on our podcast, and we want to give them to you for free. ADDValueMindset.com. In our next episode, Avital shares about the power of healing and movement. Her holistic approach to mind, body, and spirit taps into our energy center and seeks to release the greatness inside each person she touches with her speaking, teaching, or just creating opportunities for people to connect.